Welcome back fellow shop rats. Today we're back on the 86 Dodge truck. In our last few episodes we had worked at prepping and painting the door jams and the insides of the doors and mounting the doors and getting all kinds of stuff like that done in preparation for where we're at today which is prepping the rest of the truck to go ahead and be able to spray that inexpensive water-based automotive paint that we are using. Can we paint this truck for under $500? We're well on our way to having the answer to that question. Don't go away. You're not going to want to miss this one. This is My Cars Shop. I want you to see where we're at. How nice this is looking. The insides of those doors painted. The door jams painted. Things are looking really, really good here. And we're really happy with the progress on this so far. But we have some things we need to fix that I missed on this cab so let's take you over there and show you what that is one of the reasons that i go over a vehicle time and time and time again is because it is easy to miss things and i knew i had missed a little spot here which will take care of that today but i didn't see this i don't know how i missed it it was actually a channel viewer who pointed out and said hey what about that dent in the back of the cab I know what they were talking about. And I came back out and looked. I'm like, holy crap, how did I miss that? I'm sure there are probably a few other things that I've missed. Uh, but if you haven't seen this series, you want to check this out. Uh, every step of the process is here on what we've done to bring this truck to this point of having it in primer and being almost ready to paint. The store jam is all done also. We don't even have to finish it up. It's looking really good. Really happy with the way things look here so far. We just have a lot more work to do to take it the rest of the way. We really do try to share every step of the journey. Every painstaking detail is shared with you so that you don't get an unrealistic idea of what it takes to even do a quick, cheap, and dirty paint job on a truck like this that's going to turn out pretty darn respectable. And I think that's important. I understand the purpose of wanting to create a video that shows you from beginning to end and you get the flow and you see think from the beginning to the end and all of that stuff. That's not what this channel is about. We really want you to walk with us through the journey. And so this channel is about spending the day here in the shop with me working on whatever it is that I happen to be working on on that day. Today we're on this truck. One challenge I have is I can't use a normal body hammer in here because I don't have a limited amount of space to get in with a hammer. So I found one of my hammers that has the smoothest face, so we're not mucking the metal up too bad. And we're just going to put a dolly on the back of this and see if we can bang that out respectively here. I do want you to see what we're dealing with is this part of the cab right here same truck basically the box is around that so there's a context here that i want to share with you heard you say ad nauseum contexts just aren't the text messages you get from your relatives in prison if i wasn't this far along in the paint job i might go further and do more work we've got some oil canning there but remember our box is coming way up in here and you're not going to see this especially in white We've got some oil canning issues there, which I showed. I'll show you again. I could work that out, but I don't think it's necessary. It's not going to oil can. It's staying in its position. Um, it's white. It's not a glossy, high gloss finish, as you can see by this here. And the box is going to hide most of it. So the most important thing right here is this line. So I think I'm going to call that good enough and move on. It's a work truck. It's not a show truck. So keep it in mind what the context is. So let's get a little there. And I just noticed another little teeny one here somewhere. No, maybe not. It must have been an optical illusion. But I'll be going over all this with a Scotch-Brite here in a bit anyway. So if we miss something, we'll catch it. 
All right, let's get a little uh, a little Ackham pucky to put. Okay, I sanded that out. It's good. Got a little of my polyester here. Some people like this, some people don't. Some people just use Bondo. Product's product to me, I don't care. I mean, polyester is a type of Bondo. This is just a little finer type of Bondo glaze type thing it's all good okay we got a pretty good mix i think Let's see what we can do to kind of botch that up there just a little bit it's actually not a very big spot but it'll probably do it and let's put a little down here while we're at it Everybody has different ways of doing things. At the end of the day, it's about the finished product and how well it holds up, isn't it? I'm gonna let that dry. We'll hit that with some 180 real quick. We'll have to go over it with a little bit of primer. Boy, I keep feeling like there's another spot in here somewhere. But you know what? Again, in the context of this paint, I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal. Really need to peel all that tape and stuff off of there also because I need to mask it on the other side, but not right now. This is the focus. Get this done. Then we're going to start going through and scotch brighting the entire body of the truck. Let's talk about the paint. In talking to Rick, who was my paint rep from Magic, the company that makes this automotive truck and RV paint or whatever the heck it is, um, the surface doesn't necessarily have to be sanded. It needs to be clean. And it needs to not be shiny for it to bite. I'm going to go ahead and DA the whole thing down, partly because this thing has been sitting in the shop in primer and I see little oil spots and other things. So we're going to wipe it down with Prepsol and DA it down to get it all good and clean. And we're going to probably have to give it a bath and all that stuff before we paint it. But point being is always find out the recommendations of the paint manufacturer in what it takes to get the best adhesion. With the product i'm fortunate that with this company i was able to call and actually have a person to talk to i believe my new rep i've only talked to him once uh my new rep's name is buddy i believe i hope that's right sorry if you're watching and i got your name wrong i will find you because i do need to talk to you again rick retired and so uh, i'm still in that transitional phase but we've been i've been working with this manufacturer for months um sorting this product out we sprayed it for the first time uh, on these jams and inside the doors, and I'm really impressed with it. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, just go back a couple episodes in this playlist, and you'll see them where I'm actually spraying the product, what I learned, that kind of stuff. Every paint product is different, so it's important to learn how to spray it. I've been spraying since I was a teenager, so that's a good 40 years almost of spraying product on panels and things like that. Now, I've only done it professionally, off and on, I haven't done it like a lot of guys have done for 40 years where they're spraying gazillions of gallons of paint in their life. Yeah, I've sprayed hundreds of gallons of paint, but the professionals, they're going to have sprayed thousands and tens of thousands. My buddy Matt has probably sprayed even more than that because he paints semis, and I think they do it by the 55-gallon drum. So I'm going to say two things. Do your homework, and then don't, don't overthink it, okay? Uh, the more you paint, the more experience you get, the more you learn. Um... If something goes wrong, stop, let everything dry, evaluate what went wrong, go back and fix it and try again, stuff like that. So that should be dry over there now. So let's go check that. And if it is, we'll up. Being as we're so close to the finished coat, it's still a little tacky. So we're going to wait just a little bit longer. It's been maybe 10 minutes. So we'll give it a little bit more time. It's a bit muggy in here today. Um, waffling back and forth as to whether to open the door up or not. It was cooler in here, but the more I'm working, it's uh, 75 in here, so we'll make that decision here in a bit. Hopefully the extra noise isn't too bad. I turned my wood burner blower on. It's got some nice cool air coming out of it, just to move a little air in here. So uh, my 220 by hand to start, then we're gonna hit this with the DA. This is gonna plug up super fast.
Probably should have started with a little rougher gravel, but that'll be all right. I got that in there all right. Go ahead and hit that with the DA now. It'll be a lot faster. challenges to me when you're doing spot repair is knowing exactly how much you should mix up and getting your ratios right when you're you know less than one thing on the thing so just dump some primer in dump some re some of the hardener in hopefully it's enough um, it'll be what it is I mean there's some activator in there so it's going to harden eventually hopefully it doesn't take a week but uh, that's, that's one of my concerns is I get this thing all sanded down and everything and I'm ready to shoot it in the next couple days and this one spot isn't activated and drying properly and then I got to wait two weeks and then I have to go through and wipe everything down for a second time. But it is what it is. We'll let that drip in the cup so we get all the tasty goodness put in there and then we'll go and shoot some primer on those spots there. Let that flash off for 10 or 15 minutes so we'll come back and put on a heavier second coat but let's show you what we got so far so our little bitty dent up there is gone that looks good this is all looking good down here now a little bit of feather edging not worried about it it's going to be hidden i'll block it out the best i can but again box comes around up in here so there's no point in getting crazy with it not a show truck anyway so but uh, yeah we'll give that time to flash off and dry and then we'll come back and give her another good old shot of the paint there and stuff, eh? Today's video is not sponsored by Great Lakes Trailer Sales and Service, but I did want to give them a shout out and a great big thank you for recently helping me out. If you need some help, give Hannah a call. Tell her that Mike from My Car Shop sent you. She will know who the hell you're talking about. It's good to get the word out. Looks very respectable. I'm pleased with that. So we're going to go ahead and give it another coat. We'll see how that turns out. Got a little bit of feather edging in here, but I'm not worried about that. But up here, man, it's almost nothing. There's a little teeny feather edge right there. I doubt that would even show up in the top coat with this particular paint. But, you know, we're going to do it the right way to a point. So let's shoot her again, Sam. little bit carried away right there and the air pressure and paint flow a little too high and ended up with a whole bunch of massive orange peel but it's primer it's behind the box who cares and this turned out nice up here so uh it's gonna block out good so that uh it's gonna look really nice I'm, I'm thrilled with that so hopefully we don't screw the paint up all right this needs to dry for 20 minutes really before i want to do anything out here so i'll be back in 20 minutes to a half an hour and then we'll get moving forward on the paint prep on the rest of this cab. Really turned out nice. We're almost dry to the touch. I, it's a little mushy there. I bumped it and put a little teeny pachinko in there, but that'll be fine. So, yeah, that worked out good. All right, I think we're going to start on the uh, driver's side front fender. And we're going to get out our DA, swap over to the hook and loop pad. And uh, start DA in this down with a red scotch bright in preparation for paint. I think the thing that 
I really just, and I've probably said it before, but I don't remember what I said from one minute to the next because I'm getting old. My brain doesn't work so well. Lots of paint themes and stuff like that, you know. But anyway, um, the thing that I think I just always want to impress upon people is how much time it takes to do a decent paint job, much less a great paint job. And I think, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm sharing things the way I am here with this truck, even though this is a cheap and dirty. Um, we're going to have, oh, a couple hundred hours of time into it, probably by the time we're done, because we still have to do the box and uh, things like that. But, um, you know, if you want a respectable job, doesn't have to be show quality, but turns out really nice like we're doing here, that still can be inexpensive, you're still going to have to put in the time. And for a show job, it's going to be even more. My knack for missing the obvious, I was always taking this and like, tracing it on there and realized like, all I do is take a sanding disc and just, you know, just go around and uh, kind of follow along. <laughs> Good news is the hook and loop thing works really well with the scotch brights except when you like catch an edge i was catching an edge down in here and it would pop the the scotch bright off the bad news is i did this to myself i knew i did i let this sit too long before i started finish sanding and it was hard as a rock so the the uh scotch bright wasn't aggressive enough to really bite in and do what needed to be done. So I had to go over this with 220 and then 320. Um, I did it to myself. It's fine. I don't think we need to get any crazier than that. 220 is probably good enough for this paint um, because it's pretty, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, it's not going to show anything, but uh, you know, I kind of hit it with 320 for the most part also. Just to be a little bit safe, I've done 320 with base coat, clear coat with no problem and don't really get sand scratches throwing shoe most of the time. If I want to really be crazy, I'll go 400 or even 600. But uh... So this is done. I've been at this for a few hours now. Um, got a couple little spots we're going to have to touch up, but it's one of those things. I got the bulk of it. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this. I want to move on, get other things uh, in this condition. I've got stuff I need to touch up. I'm just going to do that with the ch -ch, unless I still have some mixed in the gun. Now that I think about it, I might. And just little spots where the metal popped through. So we'll touch those up real quick. Um, maybe I'll do that right now since I've already wiped this down with prep saw and everything. Just to get some bitey stuff there. But, uh, you know, it's not perfectly flat or anything. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. So I'm going to touch up these metal spots if uh, if I still can spray out of that gun. And if I can't, I'm going to get, I don't have any rattle can right now. I'll just get a can of professional line and just hit it with a little professional etch prime. And that'll be more than enough to just shoot over so that the paint will have something to bite into. There's nothing I hate more than sanding. I, uh, yeah, just don't like it. It's time consuming. I've been at this for six hours now. We got this side of the truck done. I got all the stuff touched up. I got around the back done to a point. I got the roof done. So 
I'm going to go start working my way down the other side. I've only got about another hour of time today, so we're going to run out of time. The point of this channel is realistic views of what this work is really like if you've never done it. Um, it's not to discourage anybody at all, but I also know that somebody who wants to get into painting and they have this idea that, oh man, this is going to be great. You know, on a weekend, we're going to go ahead and paint our car. Well, no. <laughs> uh, even as prep, I mean, you know how much time we've spent. You've watched the, the, the whole 25 whatever videos in this playlist on getting the truck to this point. It's a lot of time. Every one of those videos, for the most part, represents anywhere from three to eight hours of work. So you can see um if we had an average of six and we had 25 videos you can see we have a couple hundred hours worth of time into this so you do the math i'm too tired but i'm going to go ahead and start da and down the other side of the truck and see how much i can get done before becky gets home and then we have to do other things i am absolutely beat but uh again i want you to have that realistic understanding of just the how much work it takes to do a paint job out of time i'm beat beater than a beat thing i'm beat more than an egg beater can't see got more dust on my glasses than there is in the air so where we're at all the main stuff is done down the sides i did not do this because this paint is still really soft because of spraying it today um so the next step i need to do the back of the truck but i'm going to just go ahead and do that when i do this so just a little side note if you will uh something i know about me over the years is when i get this tired i'm out of time anyway but when i get this tired i my uh, my level of i don't give a crap goes way up and i know when i start feeling that it was like oh good enough oh good enough good enough i need to stop so i'll come back out here with fresh eyes go back over everything i did and you'll join me in that and uh, touch up what I might have missed. There may be a few more spots that we're going to need to hit with some ch -ch -ch, and that'll be fine. There's still a crap ton to do, but we're a crap ton closer than we were. But I wanted to share again, not just the work, but the thinking behind the work. You have to meet yourself where you're at. And if you know that you're going to start to that point of, okay, I'm going to start cutting corners and not giving a crap, that's probably the time to step back and stop. I know that about me. I know paintwork, that's not a good thing to do. It's, I don't enjoy this anyway. The only reason I do it is because I could never afford to pay anybody. I think it's a waste of money when I can do it myself. And of course I'm helping out a buddy and I've done a bunch of this work for other people too. So it's a way that I've earned money, but there's never been a time in my life when I really enjoy it. I like the finished product, I feel a lot like Steve Urkel when a paint job is done and I step back and look at it like the 47 and go, yeah, I do that. Otherwise, it's just not my thing. So in our next episode, we're going to finish up the sanding, lots of details to look at. Then maybe we'll have time at that point to pull this outside give it a good hose down, try to get down as much dust and dirt off of it as we can, get this shop area cleaned up and get it ready because if everything goes as planned, once it's all dry, we'll do the masking and get everything all done that way. And then hopefully we'll be at a point that we can, you know what I'm saying. Thanks for being here, I appreciate it. Thanks for spending the day here with me in the shop. I know it's a little different than the stuff you're used to as far as how episodes are done, but I just feel, drop it in the comments, tell me your thoughts, but I just feel like being real with you is really important.
Did I mention the word real? Thanks for watching. Rock! Why would I do what everybody else does? Let me do what I do.